so I'm getting started on the assembly here. Um, some of this is kind of repetitive, so there's no need to show you every step. Um, but basically, I'm installing the standoffs. I am replacing the uh, stock red ones that come with every ZMR kit with some nice green ones I got from uh, Multirotomania, uh, MRM.com. Um, so I just did the last one here. It's going to go on this hole here. Uh, and on this PDB, they do the screw heads do just clear the LEDs there, as you can see. Works out just fine. So, do this last one here. Feed it up through the hole. Screw it down. Doesn't have to be super, super tight, just snug. Snug. And these these are aluminum. These standoffs are aluminum. Uh, some guys use some uh, nylon. That those uh, like hexagonal nylon standoffs to save that much more grams of weight. Maybe in the future I might do that, but uh, I think these look really cool. And then uh, eventually the uh, the top plate will go on top like that. So uh, next. Now that, now that I got that on the PDB, because I had to uh, had to have access to the bottom of the PDB, um, the bottom plate is going to be under there, and then the arms will be in between that. And there's only the arms are only three millimeters thick, so you're going to only have like that much room. Uh, not probably not even that much. So uh, as you can see, you needed access to those screws before you put the arms and the bottom plate on. So I had to go ahead and put all those standoffs on. And uh, so now I'll move on to assembling the arms. All right, about to get started mounting the arms onto the uh, bottom plate frame and the uh, the PDB. And just one thing um, I'm doing, maybe it'll help you out when you're building yours. It seems really simple and kind of stupid, but um, you know you just don't want to get confused. So. Earlier in the video series, um, when I soldered the ESCs onto the motor leads, we figured out uh, which way I had to solder them to get the uh, direction of spin that I wanted. So uh, this one happens to be a counterclockwise motor, and I know that because I had to cross over two of the wires. So um, in clean flight, which is what I'm going to use on my uh, flight controller, the, the program that's that's doing all the flight controlling um, if that's the front of the quad you're gonna end up with uh, motor number one back here motor two motor three and motor four we can actually see that on the board there um, if I can get in there real close uh, so see that one says M1 you get M2 come back over here M3 and finally M4 okay and so motor number one you need it to spin clockwise so and same with motor number four diagonally across uh, your counterclockwise motors are motor number two and motor number three so just so I can not have to really think about it like what what motor am I putting on what corner before I even get started I'm just laying them out on the four corners of my building area so that way I can keep it straight as I go along and I'm just going to assemble a motor one, motor two, and then put on motor three and motor four. Just maybe something, simple little tips like that might might help things go smoother. Alright, time to get started. Okay, got all the uh, mounting screws for each arm run in there. Actually starts to look like a quad. And uh, so just left everything real loose to start with. Everything is really shaky here. Um, I left everything loose just so that I can, uh, excuse the cat there, he loves the computer screen, um, just so I can get all the holes to line up in case I had any fitment issues. Um, I could wiggle it around a little bit and get the screws to come through. So uh, I'm just going to go through and tighten each of them up for mounting screws per arm and uh, tighten them up. These are little M3 lock nuts. Um, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have a little M3 size nut driver, so I'm going to have to hold them with a pair of pliers. 
Uh, luckily, I, I do have the tiny little, um, I'm not even sure, I think it's a, I think it's a two, two millimeter hex head on these. Um, hey, don't be chewing my cables, cat. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to tighten those up and um, come back in just a minute. Starting to look like a real quad. Oh, sorry for bumping. Cat. Kitty cat. This is Thomas. He's my helper. Okay, just did the last set, and I didn't, I didn't crank them down. I just got them all snug. These little ni uh, little nuts here are uh, nylock nuts, so they're gonna hold once you get them, get the threads into that nylon area. And um, you can see they are they're just pretty much coming up flush with the bottom of that nut. So there's no need to crank them. You don't want to crack anything, especially the, if you're using a PDB like I am. You don't want to crack them. Uh, so just just get them snug. That's all it needs. Now starting to look like a real quad, and this thing is solid. It's it's good. So all right. Next we'll be measuring out these wires and cutting them to length and getting them soldered on those little pads. Cool. Thanks for watching this with me. FPV Ladybird after that. I wonder if they were watching what I was doing. But anyway, brilliant little car and it worked exactly as advertised that. And I thought, geez, this whole pure is not a bad brand. You know, they make some, it seems to make this is certainly a cool product. Unfortunately, since then, I've kind of been Set up here, you'll see that the resistance is displayed on the screen over there, and you'll hear a beep every time it gets continuity. So, when you're looking at carbon fiber components, normally you can't really come up with Alright, so in one final step of uh, getting prepared to make the final cuts, cut these wires to length and get them soldered onto the, the pads on the PDB, I just wanted to confirm one more time the rotation of the motors. So I saw a trick on another video. And I will uh, I'll put the name of the channel up on the screen here in just a moment because I saw the guy do it and I thought it was a really good idea. 
and I'm trying to share any tips and tricks that I've learned from people share them to you because you know we all haven't seen the same videos or got the same advice so anyway um, I got my four ESC's or my arms are mounted uh, ESC's are it should be in the right places but um, I'm going to be running clean flight so in clean flight here's the rear of the quad here's the front of the quad this is motor one this will be motor two this is motor three and this is motor four now uh, I'm not going to test these in order but I know which way they're supposed to spin motor one and motor four are supposed to spin clockwise motor two and motor three are supposed to spin counterclockwise uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good um, diagrams there's a diagram in the clean flight when you're setting it up it shows you the uh, proper rotation for each motor uh, depending on your configuration whether you're doing a quad or a hex or octocopter or whatever um, so this is a quad X design and even though this isn't the same frame it's the same same setup so you can see motor 1 and 4 clockwise motor 2 and 3 counterclockwise so that's what I'm going to be doing I just want to double check before I start cutting wires and soldering everything so I've got my uh, servo tester out I've got the uh, ESC jimmied up to a battery so we'll power this guy up and then just to verify rotation put a post-it note on there and uh, scribe a little line and then that way when you give it the, some juice you can see which way it's rotating this one being motor 3 should actually be counterclockwise so this way and there you go so it is so I'll just verify these other motors and then I will be safe and sound ready to go start cutting cutting wires to length and soldering them on the pads Okay, motor four should be clockwise. Oh, it's been right off, got a little sloppy, but you can see it's uh, that was clockwise. All right, try these other two. This one, uh, one, two, so two should be counterclockwise. And there we go. So we'll do this last one. I think I got it right. Last one to test is motor number one. Motor number one should be a clockwise rotation. If I had an actual card instead of a piece of paper, this might hold on a little bit better. Business card would work fine, you know? But yeah, you can see. Get it on the threads there, and I'll just give it a little bit of juice. So yeah, start spinning clockwise. So, all right, that just verifies for me that everything's mounted in the right 
place and I'm safe to start cutting wires to length and soldering onto the pads. So that's what I'll be doing next.